Uh, the topic today is going to be shielding. A lot of requests to go over shielding things for people out in our audience that are TIs and need to buy certain type of things uh, for shielding. Uh, Catherine said that Karen, you might be a good one to start off on shielding since you're okay. sitting in a shielded kind of environment right now. So, uh, yes. Uh, I'm going to <laughs> Actually, actually, while we start off, Karen, I'm going to bring as a demonstration to show people the things that you got me as shielding, you know, the green things. So whilst you get started and I'll, I'll bring them for, to show people. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, first, first of uh, all, what I tell people is I'm not a scientist, you know, I'm basically what somebody called a word nerd. So that means very much right brain and not a lot left brain. But uh, through trial and error, have uh, I also started out with aluminum and found that if you use aluminum, you have to use multiple layers of it, you know, seven to 12 to be effective. And that's something, if you find yourself being hit immediately, that's something to grab, but you're probably going to want to augment that with other things. And uh, what I tell people is, look, whatever you're getting hit with, you have a problem with heat. Even the ultrasonics, when an ultrasonic wave, which, you know, if you, if you view ultrasonics as a wave, the higher and the more intensive the wave is, I mean, the ultrasonics are, the more closely together the wave shows on any what is this, spectom, uh, spectrograph or spectrometer or something like that. Um, but if you have ultrasonics of a certain level, those waves become solid bands, and those solid bands generate heat just like microwave, just like electromagnetic radiation, um, all, all of what we're facing generates heat, and that is what they're trying to kill us with, you know? So what you want to think about is what is heat reflective, heat resistant, and also some of this will uh, reflect with mirrored uh, surfaces, you know, like aluminum, like mylar, M-Y-L-A-R, and also I found useful the window tinting and car tinting that is sold to people who have automobiles and cars in the hotter states, you know, like Texas, Florida, Georgia, where they have, where these tints are sold with a very high heat resistance and uh, reflectivity actually get a roll of window tinting for your car or for your house and just put it on the wall thing on the wall and cover the window as well uh, you can use the blue tape that is for painting that will not destroy your paint job so that's one aspect um, and I've used that in my car I got uh, for my car I got the high heat resistant window tinting that you can put on with water so that as at a certain point you don't like it you just take it off it's not a big deal as where the uh, self adhesive is pretty complex to put on um, and we'll go into the what I did with my car as well but Again, you're thinking heat resistance and some reflectivity. Now, you can put in your home strong magnets, put them all over the place, put, strong, put mirrors that face toward the outside of the house. And that actually has screwed up V2K that they've tried to use on me. I've heard voices or sounds out into the room, but not in my head. So that tells me what they're using for V2K is linear. And once it hits the room with the strong magnets and the mirrors, it gets thrown all over the place and they can't aim it at me. So they have royally failed in that, in those probably about five attempts. Uh, one attempt was uh, when I was walking the dog and I was wearing a baseball cap that had silver infusion, which I will plug the people who, uh, who uh, make those, you know, I think it's uh, electromagnetic field, less EMF. So take a look at anything with silver infusion because that seems to work very nicely. And they even have sleeping caps with silver infusion and eye masks with silver infusion. So them I recommend very much. And the baseball cap you see me wearing very often, not today, but very often is silver infused. I live in it, not because I love baseball caps, but because it actually works. So um, again, we're going to go back to the general shielding. Uh, Ramola gave me the tip about reflectix. Okay, Reflectix is something that uh, is like bubble wrap, but with aluminum on both sides. 
So that is very nice in that it stands by itself. It's, it's rather stiff, but still malleable. And it comes in about three different widths in heights. So that helps a lot. I will tell you that anything with Teflon, like a baking sheet, that will reflect a great majority of these weapons. Now, nothing is foolproof, but we're working into protecting yourself as much as possible. If you get down to 80, 90% deflection of this stuff, you're doing pretty well. So um, I have even resorted at times to sleeping in a cast iron bathtub with a lot of this uh, shielding over me because that gives me pretty darn good protection. I've used cast iron grills. Uh, again, you can get grill sheets, and this is a wonderful time of year to go out looking for this stuff because we're heading into summer, and they're going to be selling grill sheets, which is the uh, sheet you put on the grill where you cook vegetables so they don't fall through the, um, the, the grill Cool. So you want grill sheets that are up to 500 degrees heat resistant. Um, those can be taped to a wall. Those can be taped inside your car. Okay. Another good thing, I have found that copper uh, is actually better than aluminum, uh, whether it's aluminum foil or aluminum piece of metal, because copper actually deflects a broader range of these waves than aluminum. Okay. Now I will tell you that when I was getting tailed and shot from behind, I put aluminum uh, metal pieces in the hatchback of my SUV. I put them, I taped them up against the back of the hatchback. And when these idiots came up behind me thinking they were so smart, they had caught me at a red light or a stop sign. And they came up to me and uh, an inch from my bumper with the d directed energy weapon on full force well, guess what? I saw them doing their little dance in their car because the copper was reflecting it right back into their car and they couldn't do anything about it. And they were stuck where they were because there were, there were people behind them. So that was rather gratifying. But um, you can take the these um, copper sheets in the back of your car and they come in different sizes. I put the biggest that I could find and it will reflect this garbage back into the cars of the people hitting you with it, and I guarantee you they won't come as close. If you want to add oomph to that, you can actually take something called grill paint that is, is heat-resistant grill paint that is made so that you can repaint your grill once it starts to wear, you know, and you need the heat resistant, and there are two different types. One of them you get at Lowe's, one of them you get at Home Depot. I think Home Depot goes up to about 11, 1200 degrees heat resistant. But if you go to Lowe's, it's about 2000 degrees heat resistant. Me, the most effective thing is to have the copper that faces towards the perps. And then you put the heat resistant paint on the side of the copper that is inside your car so that anything that actually penetrates the copper is mitigated by the grill resistant heat paint. You can fix up your car with that. There are even like hobby shops that will sell you a uh, piece of copper, very shiny copper for hobbies, but you can find one that fits more or less the size of your visor. So I suggest putting these copper sheets um, that are about the size of your visor on the outside where the visor is looking toward the, the oncoming traffic and pull it down so that these people shoot you with anything, it gets deflected and you don't get so much blinded by it. You know, obviously you, and, and you can also buy um, laser goggles while you're driving so that some of these people who have the lasers actually in their lights coming towards you and won't eventually make you blind. So that's an, another suggestion. I don't know. If we can show the list, it might prompt my memory. But also something else to think about is um, electrical tape. That is heat resistant. That's yet another tip. But like I said, it's just, you know, Teflon is wonderful. It really is. The grill, re uh, the heat resistant grill paint, the copper, I think are all the best. Now, um, don't forget these. Um, when, once you get to the vibrational uh, weapons or, 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 pardon? I said, don't forget these, Karen. There you go, silicon. Exactly. So I was going to say, mm -hmm. as soon as, yes, I, I sent Dr. Horton a couple of silicon oven mitts. 
Um, when you get to vibrational weapons and ultrasonic high-pitched hearing, uh, you're looking at being able to mitigate the vibrations of these things and copper and, and such don't really do it. What you need is something like silicon. Silicon is like rubber. It will dampen and reduce the vibration of these things. And so it is heat resistant. So it also is, uh, like I said, it's malleable. So you can actually put it in your clothing. And what I sent Catherine um, are the Rachel Ray oven mitts, and don't get the ones with the thumbs, get the rounded ones, um, that you can find at Walmart. And so they've got a cloth side that you can wear against your skin, and then you, pu you point the silicon outward toward the weapons. Don't put the silicon next to your skin. You will erupt with open sores because uh, silicon does not allow your skin to breathe. So you're going to need something in between the silicon and your skin if you put it in your clothing. I mean, you can sew these things into a vest and wear it. You can put them under your clothing however you... Um, but you are looking to mitigate vibrational and, uh, and ultra-high pitch noise uh, with silicon. I'll tell you that if it's vibrational, what it does is it makes your body resonate to the vibration being sent into your home or at you. And that is extraordinarily dangerous because if your heart vibrates at a rate it's not meant to, it'll stop or your kidneys will be destroyed or something of that nature. So you have got to protect yourself from that type of thing. If you are lucky enough to be hearing a high pitched sound, then you know that it's there and it's affecting you. So do please take some kind of precautions because this will kill you. Um, I spoke to David Galbots, who is a military um, officer, or he was, he's retired now. And he was telling me that on one of the, uh, army bases that he worked, they would actually truck in dogs that he had apparently stolen or gotten from the humane sh shelter under false pretenses and test these weapons on them. And ultrasonics, coughing, that means you are at the beginning of uh, respiratory arrest. Do something to protect yourself. Even if it's high-pitched noise, it can be killing you. So, um, like I said, the, we will have the list, I think, uh, hopefully for anybody, everybody to see. And uh, if you have any ideas, by all means, please uh, get in touch with us and we will discuss that. Things that I've, um, in the last 19 or 20 months of being targeted, like I said, I'm not a scientist. And unfortunately, Dr. Duncan has said he can't give people tips on how to shield because it would betray his confidentiality oath. But since I never worked on anything like this, my own um, uh, trial and error is not in the least confidential. I am absolutely more than glad to share these insights with people. And if it triggers you to tell us more uh, products that you find useful, please, by all means, because what we want to do is save a life. And by golly, we want everybody alive and healthy when we get our day in court and these people go to prison. Yeah, I think you um, actually on this note, I'm glad you All right, so that's, that's my spiel right now. So, sorry, Karen, I actually interrupted on my end. It was, it was delayed. But um, I... I, um, I this, this is such a, a great list, actually, the, the things that I can add to that. So um, I'm not sure if my camera is actually showing, um, you know, my end. Um, maybe yes, I, I see you. You can see me um, blown up. Okay. Because um, so I just want to show people my shoes. I have to insulate my study like that all around because I have perps all around like this. And there's aluminium behind the case. Um, so my study, which looks like a normal office, usually, looks like um, a bunker for the 21st century war. And I have to say, I'm glad I did that. It's not perfect because I still can be and I am being shot at from above and from below. I'm sitting on, um, on a carpet which has, I think, six layers of aluminium below. Um, but what I can hear is the shots against the aluminium that are fired from my neighbors. And it is just astounding. Every now and then I'll just hear 
an actual loud popping sound as these military shots are being fired. And in the last episode, I actually showed a video where I recorded not just the audio of these shots, but you can actually see a shot putting a dent into aluminium. I mean, we are talking horrific, horrific military weapons here. Um, but already aluminium helps a lot with these directed shots because they get just reflected back. Um, and I agree with Karen that copper is, is so much better, but I think it's also, I think, five to ten times more expensive. So if you really have to cover a room, you know, you can always buy a baking foil or aluminium foil um, and just cover the room for, you know, less than $20, whereas with copper, I think that would be $200 or something like that. Um, yeah. So the that, problem is, though, you need so very much aluminum, multiple layers. So people, when you're putting up aluminum, one layer is not going to do it. Minimum seven, and I've heard people say 12 is better. Yeah, that's true. So I have got, um, I don't have them here, but in my videos, I show them these big panels, and they are moving boxes, which I have wrapped um, six times over in aluminum. So that, there's actually six layers either side of the cardboard. And when I go to bed, I make a tent. So I put, you know, aluminum these aluminum panels under the mattress and then aluminum panels above like that. And I literally crawl into the tent. And that's how I slept for the past, I think, eight months or something like that. And I tried putting a Faraday cage around that, but I have to say a Faraday cage does very, very little. I think there might be some signals that are working out, but otherwise the directed shots, they just punch through like nothing mm -hmm. else. That's, a, that's my experience. And I have mm -hmm. a... I'm sorry, I, I end up using cookie sheets, you know, the Teflon that Karen was talking about. Um, I literally line on, well, I'm sleeping on the couch these days, you know, sometimes I sleep upstairs, which is in this room on my bed, uh, but they hit very nicely from downstairs. So I've started to sleep on the couch and they seem to have less downstairs, that is, and they seem to be able to hit me less over there. But literally, I have to line the couch on one side, you know, with these cookie sheets wrapped in Reflectix, which, you know, also Karen was talking about, now I'm surrounded by Reflectix, I can show you what it looks like. Um, it's just it's just like the aluminium foil you're talking about, Karen. It's just a little thicker because it has a bubble wrap on the inside. And this, you can definitely hear the shots, as you were saying, pulsed microwave shots from absolute military weapons, you know. And they, ha they have such utter goal because they are making such a racket, and we can record this racket, you know. And I have started to record it. But I've slept so many nights without recording it, and they make incredibly loud sounds. And they wake you up several times through the night. This is all part of their sleep deprivation mechanism, you know. Um, total torture. Imagine, we're talking about modern-day Europe and America. We're being tortured. This is torture. Yeah, I Classic think sleep deprivation torture. Well, let me, let me jump in and give a hint for people who are, I mean, the most important time that you're shielded is when you sleep. I want to interrupt not only your sleep to make you tired and uh, keep you uh, confused, but they also want to interrupt the healing that your cellular, um, that you do overnight. So one thing that I found, um, if you are can actually conduct some of this. And then also, if you can, put under your bed mirrors that reflect down. You want the shiny side to reflect down because, because some of these weapons will actually come up through the ground. Even if you don't have a basement, I have... Uh, been woken up by absolute vibration coming up through the ground on a slab. So the way that I fixed that was to put mirrors facing downward under the bed and to also put multiple uh, layers of aluminum in between the box spring and the mattress. And I will tell you another thing that I didn't mention. Um, there's something called a dog cooling gel bed Again, it's on sale now because it's, it's summer, and that has cooling gel in it that does feel cool to the touch, but it will mitigate vibrations and sound-based weapons. So that is yet another thing you could actually add to your repertoire and put on your bed and sleep on it if you have problems with anything coming up through the bed, and you can actually sleep on one and then put another one on top of you. They have small, medium, large, extra large. So you decide what it is that you want to, to do, you know, uh, the configuration that you want. And I would go to the cheaper stores, um, you know, like 
uh, you know, some of these uh, secondhand stores that they just basically sell things other places could not get rid of. And you'll get a $24 dog cool jet, uh, bell, uh, gel bed for 16 when it's originally 25 so that helps a lot. Um, so that's yet another idea I wanted to make sure that I did not forget to mention. Yeah, I think, um, um, you know, the, the other thing I, I um, actually, before I, before I forget, um, or maybe we should, we should stick up the, um, the military section. Yeah, actually, maybe we should. I, I just have to remember that comment about Dr. Robert Duncan um, and his reticence to inform us about shielding. Anyway. Um, you know, the, the other thing, which is, is so important, and people forget about that, because you, you, um, we now covered shielding against um, ultrasonics and shielding against electromagnetic um, things. Um, and also, the works just like the reflective, reflectix. It's, um, it's the aluminum sheeting and so on. But the other thing um, you also have to shield against is when you're staying in a hotel, break in. Because they will leave the hotel room and inform and um, you have to lock the room, you have to lock the entrance, and you have to make sure that if there's a desk, you actually push the desk and jam the desk against the, the door because otherwise these people at night. It's one of the standard things. So it's even that sort of thing you have to think about. And you know, I, I just want to pop in one little interjection there when you speak about hotels and breaking in, Catherine, is um, one of the things you can use, by the way, is a door stopper. You know, you can stick that underneath your door as well. There, there are door stopper alarms meant for people who stay in hotels a lot. Oh, brilliant. That, that sounds like a great thing, too. So there's an alarm as well. So there's a sound that will go off. Yeah, yeah. It's on the door, yes. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to actually underline at this point, and maybe this is a tiny little segue into the military aspect, is when we say people are breaking into hotel rooms and they're breaking into homes, I want to underline that these are activities, these are covert activities that are actually being conducted by special operations forces and by clandestine services. And if you look up the military manuals, you know, if you look up... Um, and the CIA manuals, you will learn about the clandestine services. You're not going to learn about everything they do, but this is the kind of thing that you have to read the, you know, the investigative journalism on the CIA to find out about. So clandestine action and covert action is not, you know, figments of imagination in this day and age anymore. It's not paranoia. It's not a bunch of people getting paranoid about what the surveillance state is doing. It's actual... Um, strategic operating procedure from the military, from the very dark operations in, in, in our military services and in our intelligence services, which really are not our military and our intelligence anymore. They're working for somebody else, clearly, you know. They're working for the corporate state. Yeah, against them. Sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead, Catherine. How very, 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 very important it is that you are lock yourself in in hotel rooms at all times.